Sister Brown, last time I saw you, we were at the vice president's crib <laughs> spitting with little Wayne. That's right. <laughs> a milli, a milli, a milli, a mil. Well, okay. Um, but you are a renowned and legendary activist uh, when it comes especially to voting. You're also running a tremendous program at Harvard that we had the opportunity to see up close. You're an extraordinary activist and agent of change. When it comes to voting, we see the retrenchment, we see the arguments between constitutional demands, states' rights, the gerrymandering, which is rigging the voting, um, state legislators, especially de uh, Republicans who are redrawing a map mm -hmm. with strange geography. Mm -hmm. it, it, it can be overwhelming, especially to younger folk, young person like Brother Jones notwithstanding, you know, who think, my God, why even try? Because it's hooked up, it's rigged from the very beginning. Give us a word of insight from your extraordinary experiences about what we can do to strengthen the vote and to make sure that we use it in a way that is productive for our interests. Oh, oh freedom. Mm. Oh, oh, freedom. Oh, oh, freedom over me, over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I wanted to sing that because I want to bring the spirit of who we are in the room. Because it ain't start with us. The fact that we are in this room right here mm. is because there was somebody mm. not only singing that song, but I want you to hear the words of the song. Mm. Before I be a slave, I'll be, buried in, I'll be buried in my grave. I'm saying that because we really have to recognize that this isn't about centering the other folk. Right. We have to center ourselves in our power. And in this country, power is not something that is earned. Right. You, can, you can work as hard as you want to. You've got to take power in this country, and I'm raising this because we're operating in this context, in this political context, like we're not fighting for our very lives. Right. If there were brothers and sisters that literally were denied the right to read, to write, that were denied their own humanity, how in the world can we sit here and talk about how hard it is? Right? That we don't even have the luxury or the privilege to be able to say that coming from where our ancestors have come. And so I'm raising this because some way we have forgotten who we are. And so I am hoping in this moment that literally we recognize that it's never been just strategy that has freed black folks. It has been our spirit. It's mm -hmm. been the spirit of resistance. It's been the spirit of us organizing. It has been the spirit of us radically reimagining something that we had never seen or felt before. It has been the spirit of us literally connecting with our people, recognizing that every single thing that I do, that at the end of the day, even a duck got enough sense to take care of his children, right? That we have to fight for our children. Like, it's, if it's going to be me or you, it's going to be you, because it ain't going to be me. Mm. And so I'm saying this because it's that kind of fire that we actually got to tap into in our bodies, that we got to elevate our conversations, that we can't keep responding to what they want. I don't give a damn what they want. It is around what is it that we want for our people? What are the policies we need? How do we actually organize that? There are three things I say. One, black folk, you need to move to the South. I know y'all like New York and California, <laughs> most places, but you need to move to the South. We got the numbers, we got the people, we got the spirit of resistance. The second thing is you need a political home. This is not the moment that even though I'm a commentator on MSNBC, don't get your information just off on TV and opinions, that you have got to get a political home that you're a part of, whether that's the Lawyers Committee, whether that's NAACP, whether that's Black Voters Matter, you have to join or be a part of something that literally is going to help you shape the paradigm of how you're thinking about politics within the context of blackness. The third thing I'm going to say is we can give all these white folk money for our shoes, our clothes, our, all the things that we're doing. You need to have a budget, a political budget. Call it your freedom fund. Mm. So create a freedom fund so that you are actually supporting your liberation. How can you support those that are trying to oppress you that you will not put money aside to fight for your own liberation. So those are three things that I think that we can do that are practical level things that we can do. He's good to know. Ah. Yes, he is. All right. Uh, <laughs> speak. My God. All right. That's the Reverend Dr. Latasha Brown. 
in case y'all did not know that. Fannie Lou Hamer. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Mr. Brown, take us on home. You know, we, it's not just about what they want, because I think sometimes we're too focused on what, what the, whoever the they is. It is a question of what it is that we want. And I ask people often to close their eyes and imagine what would America look like without racism. And I want you all to do that when you go home, right? Many of us have never been asked that question. We have to use our radical reimagination. We're creative, y'all. Our creativity is not just for our entertainment or for other folks' entertainment. We have to be creative to think about what systems are going to serve us. For the first thing I did right was the day I started to fight. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on, hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize and radically reimagine the kind of America that we desire and that we deserve. Amen. Give it up for Representative Plaskett, for Sister Brown, for Justin Jones, Representative, and for Sister Warren. God bless them. Give them all some mad love up in here this morning. Finally this morning, we have another special message, and the messenger is well known to you all. To introduce him, I'll just quote what Mayor Eric Adams said a few days ago in presenting him with the key to the city of New York. Despite all of his successes, he has never forgotten where he came from, giving back to New York City, donating millions to underserved communities, and supporting aspiring black entrepreneurs. I thought I told you we weren't going to stop. I thought I told you we weren't going to stop Sean Diddy 